Welcome, welcome. We're back. Hello, guys. It's David R. Becker again on your Thursday at 6.30. We're here. <laughs> and it works. This is awesome. This is about the third week or fourth week that no problems. So hello um, from the great white north, <laughs> in the freezing north here up um, in northern Illinois. It's very cold. Uh, anyways, let's get back to let's get going here. Got a big project today to do here today. And um, let me just show you a couple things that we're we'll going through. We're we'll repainting a figure, and one of the biggest things you got to do and remember is when you're painting. And actually, this is for any time you're painting, is that drawing is number one. You got to get the drawing down on the paper correctly. Try to make it look like the image that you're doing. Don't. Um, fudge here and that's the most important part is you know, i don't care what you do to get it onto the painting onto the paper try to get it on there and looking great if you got to trace it and um, take it to a photo place to get it traced and then even use some of the um, carbon paper to put it down that's what you want to do so um let me go um and actually some people had asked me where to get the um the <laughs> the um image that we're doing because there's some new people huh? every week there's every so often there's a new person that comes in you go to my website at beckerart.net you come down here and right here my weekly class at demo paint along is right there um, this is where you get it right here and if you want to come there's my youtube channel and here over here is my facebook my youtube pinterest and instagram accounts you can just go into these parts right there all right so that's where you get the stuff and my and my supplies are here that i'm using Today I did use some masking fluid. I used masking fluid today, and I'll show you what I did with that. And uh, let's go right to our value study real quickly. And I didn't sketch one up this time. I did. I just turned it black and white to show you that um, I'm going to use the values. I'm going to go for the values and make sure that everything is looking great with the values. Um, what we're going to do is we have to watch out for um, the things like I took out. You know, there's a couple of things I took out. I took this out. Not sure what that is. This thing on top of her head. I took that out. I didn't put that in the drawing. And something back is back in here. But I'm going to paint it kind of loosely. And so, um, and my lights basically are her, the light part of her that the light is shining on. Not the part of her that's in shadow. Um, I did it this afternoon. Let me just give you right to the tabletop and I'll show you what I did this afternoon in my class. And so... We did this this afternoon, and we did, and the blues and the orange was our complement. And so, if you look, um, this in here is not my light area. All this stuff here, her legs and stuff, are in the dark. That's the dark part of my um, value pattern. If you squint your eyes, you see the light. It's this, and everything around her, all the little white light. That's the light. Um, yes, this is a middle tone. Some of this is a middle tone, like her dress and uh, her tutu or whatever is a little bit lighter here. So that's kind of in the light, but middle tone is considered to go either way. So I try to think of the composition as a black and white. And if you look at the left, upper left hand corner, you'll see the black and white I'm using this time. I'm not going to be using the color version because I don't want to have the colors from the photograph make me use those. Uh, that's what I did this afternoon. I did it with blue and then this time I'm going to use, I think I'm going to think I'm more use more of the um, violets in yellow. I'm going to make bring her into the yellow field and violets and use that co color combination. So let's get going right away and if you have any comments please put them on to the side here in the chat and I will look up every once in a while to see what you guys are chatting about. <laughs> and I'm going to just say hi to everybody who's here so far. We got Millie, we've got Barbara, Lillian, Rose, Everett, Mill, Maura, Sue, Billy, Suze, Mary, Marianne, we got Ben, who else we got there? Anne and Sonia. Thanks a lot, guys, for joining me every week. And um, thanks also for putting it up on the Facebook page, on the group. A lot of you have asked questions and stuff. And hey, Tina, and you, you ask questions about your work that you have done and what the, if there's a problem. I can't always answer all of them, but if I can't answer it, there's a lot of other students that are on there and they can answer it for you too. And so it helps for you to look at other person's work. And actually, I've got a, today we're going to be work, drinking a Brickstone Brewery Milkshake IPA. I know, I get some weird drinks here, but um, I'm always going for the weirdest. And so we're going to see what this one's like. And so, cheers everybody. Let's see what this beer is like. And so again, it's an IPA. It's from Illinois. So Brickstone Brewery. I'm not sure where that's from, but we'll see how that is. 
Cheers, everybody. Wow, that's a milkshake IPA. <laughs> it tastes pretty good. <laughs> All right, so let's get going here. So, of course, what we what do we start out with for well, lights? Of course. Oh, I wanted to explain to you the masking fluid. So I use Holbein masking fluid. It comes in a bottle like this, and um, they have some really good. Um, it, it's the light green on there, so you're seeing it as a light green on your paper. And so I did the highlights around the outer edge. If you look at the photograph up here in the um, upper left, see how there's little white specks and spots? Well, I put them in there this time. Instead of going around there, I just put on the masking fluid. And how did I put it on? I put it on with a mechanical um, ruling pen, it's called. It's a ruling pen. It's um, this thing that has a little bit of a, uh, it, it comes apart. And so you dip this into the into the masking fluid and then you can gauge how wide, let's see if you can see that, you can gauge how far open you want it or closed to make it kind of draw like a real fine sharp pen. And so there's a little bit of a wheel there and you can open and close it and stuff. But I dipped that in there and then I just put it on there and I let it dry. So I, like I said, I am using masking fluid. A lot of times if you use masking fluid for too big an area on my paper, the Stonehenge, it may rip it a little bit, but on sm something small like this, it doesn't do any damage whatsoever. Um, I, for the big parts, I like to use the soft tape, which I don't have. I'm getting that from Holbein in a week. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do a whole little thing on, um, on the soft tape where you can use it and you can actually make um, stencils with it. Anyways, let's get going here. And we're going to do the background and do our lights. And the lights are what? The background all in through here. Um, the, this part of the dress that's light. She is not in the light, but I will put the middle tones in there right away. I'll go right over her with this wash of light and I go right over her just so I can get some of those colors inside of um, inside of her body. So we're just going to go in here and wipe it down with water. And again, if you have questions, just put them up there. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Carol. Hey, Lynn. Uh, just came in, I see. And so we're going to kind of put this in here. And like I said, this one, I did in blue and orange. I did this one in blue and orange in my classroom this afternoon. But um, this one, I'm going to work more with violets and yellows in my combination. And so I'm going in there with a little lavender. And I'm going to keep it light to dark. Oh, boy, this reflection. One of these days, I'm going to get my studio. I haven't got into my studio yet, but sooner or later, we'll get in there. I still have to sell a bunch of stuff on eBay and stuff. So, and now we're going to go right over here. And I probably should have went around this dress a little bit, around the tutu. And again, I'm using lavender, which has a little bit of white in it. But I'm using it so thin that you cannot tell that there's white in it. And um, would it even be possible to do this for a um, club like the TWSA? Because you're using it very, very liquidy. I put a little violet in there. And so the violets are going to be in my light. I didn't wet the spot over here, so I can see I'm getting a hard edge line. So I'm going in here, and I'm... I'm going to do this really kind of loosely. I want to have kind of a, a really loose look. I don't want it to be tight like the photograph. I want it to have that watercolor feel where there's a lot of watercolor look in it. You know, a drippiness and there's spattering. I'm going to throw... Look at that. Isn't that fun? Spattering it up. I just want it to be a little bit more than the photograph. I want it to be a beautiful painting. And sometimes paintings, you know, allow you to do things like that, like spatter. And, and so what I'm going to do now is wipe this down. I'm going to take this out of here because I went into my white dress here, tutu. So I'm going to wipe that out there real quickly. And so there's my darker purple. And it doesn't mean I just use purple. You know, I can use a purple, a little bit of blue in there. I'm going to get some of this um, reflection in here. There's like a little shadowing. And I know it's in the leg and I know it's all that, but... It's still wet, so I'm going to be putting other colors in there, middle tones, right away. And so I'll get a little bit of this. I'm going to go with some orange and pinks. Actually, I was going to make her orangey yellow for her flesh tone because the purple works well with the yellows, right? And so I'm going to put a little bit of that in the leg here right away. Maybe a little bit of her. And I know it seems weird that you go over like stuff like this and um, you're putting it on top of everything, but this is my light. And you got to understand that the darks late come later and they're going to be covering up all these lights that I put down up to where then this will be the middle tone, like this dress color. I want to have a little bit of yellowish orange right here. 
And so that will be the light. I know it's dark right now, but that will be the light for the dark area. Or the middle tone, actually. Because it's going to be kind of middle tone area. And the rest I'm going to keep light and white. And so I'm kind of going, going in here and getting it. Some people say, why wouldn't they go right to the dark right away? Uh, I could do that, but then I'd have to... Have, I want a hard edge here where it dresses. And so I'm going to make her skin in the flesh tone darker than the white dress. And so if I did that now, it would be a soft edge there. And it'll just look so much better later. I guarantee it will. And it's also a way of just kind of getting rid of the white of the paper. A lot of artists don't like the white of the paper. It kind of scares them. So this is a good way of getting rid of the white of the paper. Putting a little of this color into the... She does have, I think, um, leggings on that are lighter. Um, I'm just going to make it look like you can kind of see through them a little bit. And again, I'm going more with the yellows this time instead of orange. And so the flesh tone will look fleshy. I mean, anything that's yellow or pink or red will look like flesh tones. You just got to make it throughout then. Make it throughout the area on her face. And why can I do this up here? Because that's all going to be dark. You got to understand that that is dark. And those little splashes, oh, well, that's, that was not supposed to be there. But <laughs> we can go in. Hold on. Let me see what I do here. Uh, Suze wants to know what palette is this? This is just a Holbein palette. It's just those um, those cheap plastic palettes that I use. You can get any, see it's a Holbein palette. It's like, this is a cover. You can see it's very messy. I use it inside of the cover sometimes. But it's just one of these palettes, these plastic palettes. You can get any, a lot of the companies make them. They're all the same. They have it just maybe a little bit different, um, the, the slots that you put your paint in. They're not the greatest. I was always trying to invent a new one for that, but um, that's not going to happen in a while. <laughs> All right, so there we got some of the colors in here, and I'm kind of installing here so this dries a little bit because right away, let me just show you. Um, I showed this that you can, um, this week I did a little thing on scrubbing out. It was a little um, for my newsletter. I did my newsletter, was I did a little video for scrubbing out. And so let's say you did something like that where you made a mistake. You can scrub it a little bit because this is dry already up there. Scrub it a little bit, put some water up there, and then just apply your pigment up there again. And it'll be fine like you never made a mistake as long as it, then you float the pigment on there. But look for my, um, if you didn't get my newsletter and didn't get my newsletter this week, you can go in to the archives, find it, and you'll see how to scrub out an area and how to scrub out areas of the paper. All right, so I'm just holding up a little bit just to see. And this is all wet here, so let me just dry it up a little bit. And um, so there, there's my there's my lights. Basically, that's the lights. And of course, I'm going to go back into some of the light areas on top of that. And so that's fine. Uh, but it's just a way of getting rid of your white of the paper and get this is basically done. Then this area right here, that's done. I don't have to go back into that. If there's a few details in there, yes, you can put those in. But basically, the overall part of that is done. So now let's go right into our darks. I mean, that was our lights. Let's go right into our darks. Don't waste any time. And that's how it is that I can do the painting in, in No Time Flat because you just get the lights done and then you go to your darks. It's that simple. Basically, <laughs> lights and then darks. Okay, maybe it's not that simple. but um, So now I'm coming down here. And just start putting a color in there. And again, I start out with one color, but that doesn't mean I don't have to put other colors into that. I drop other colors to float those other colors in there. So I'm putting other colors in there, maybe even some warm colors. There's a little bit of red in there. Uh, sorry about that reflection. I'm going to get one of these days, I'll get the studio hooked up and we won't have reflections like that anymore. So we're going to put a little black, a little bit of dark. I'm just wetting it down here. And you'll tell right away if this is dry enough, because if it's damp even, you're going to get a really weird line right there. So always wait for your drying time. And on my screen, again, it looks blue, but it is a very, very violet violet. I'm drop some color in there. Come down here. And once it's wet, that's when you can drop other colors in there besides just what you have in your brush. And I put other colors in there. I put some warm colors in there. So this is going to be the cooler part in the back. And as I come forward, it gets a little bit warmer. But I float other colors in there besides the one color because it's wet and it will soften itself. The only thing I need to have hard edges is this edge right here anyway. So I'm going to leave that that way. Let me put this at a little bit of an angle. And so you can go like this. And there we go. 
And now we're going to come around the corner here, going to go up this side here. And later on, I will make this darker again too. I'll re-wet that area, but not right now because then this is all messed up. So I'm just going to go in here right now, get the bottom of this piece come around here. And then um, we're just going to leave this alone for a second because that's okay to have a hard edge right there. I'm going to harden it anyways and get a little bit closer to that value there. And that's actually going to turn out pretty light anyways because once it dries, it's going to be trying 20% lighter. So let's go up in our spot up here. I'm going to use a smaller brush because I got you in a smaller area. Right, and so you use the brush that best fits the purpose. So now we go in here with a little bit of violet again. I didn't wet the surface yet because I'm going to go around. And actually, I'm going to do her first. Now I think about it because she is lighter than the background, so I've got to do her first. I always think light to dark, and so let's just do her middle tone she's more of a middle tone right so i'm gonna go right in here of course i make all my women redheads so she's got red hair <laughs> and so just go in here and put some dark in here there's a bun i put a bun in her hair to make it look more like a young young girl instead of a lady i guess the ladies wear buns too but the thing is this is a picture of a younger lady and so you have to kind of fit your drawing to that um sometimes people make the head's too large or they make them look too old by you know what their hairstyle is or the drawing end of it and so watch that that you don't make her too old and drawing of course is that's a big thing and so you just have to practice that that's one of those things you just got to practice and and study and see how it works and and so now i'm going to go in here with a little bit of orangey pink make it kind of a salmony color and then put a little bit of um a little bit of violet in that to darken it up a little bit. And you're going to come in here and then just get the get that first wash down, remember, with water. Go to the hard edge, go to the edges. And then um, I use, again, orange, a little bit of pink. I'm going to stop at the, at the dress at the moment just so that um, the dress will be darker. But I'm just, again, trying to get it to look a hard edge and separate it right there. It's a good place to separate anyways. Kind of come down here, right through this little bit of lace that you got going. I'm going to wipe out a little bit there. Right down to the arms. The hand is coming on this way. And while it's wet, you do things like put other colors in there while it is wet. You get the shape while it's wet to get the soft edges. That's what we learned um, last week in my newsletter, how to control that edges of the soft edges. You can put a little bit darker color in, make it thicker, and then you can control the edge. You can make it a little bit thicker. Control, like, do I want it darker on this side? But I just want it to be a little bit so it rolls over to one side. Yes. And so how do you do that? With an edge. So I have the edge, even though it's soft edged, it's still an edge. It's just a soft edge. Come down here to her arm. And if I want to highlight, let's say I want to highlight, um, like, things that are reflecting into her, into her body. So... How about a little bit of violet reflecting from the bottom? Because the floor, the, all this violet that you got here, doesn't matter what it is, it's violet in my painting and that has to reflect it back into the body. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that into the arm right away. It's not in the photograph. Some of the stuff you will not see in the photograph. Um, it's what you do as an artist to make it look right. Make it look like it's supposed to. You're supposed to reflect lights underneath your arm here. I'm going to reflect a little bit of the light, the purple that's coming in from around her and going in there. And that's the color I'm using because it's the color of this, this area. If the photograph was all blue, yes, the would be blue in there like I did in here. Here I took blue. This is all blue. And see how I put blue in these areas that then reflect into the, into the flesh tones. That's a couple people have asked, well, why is there? There's no flesh. Her flesh tone is not purple. She doesn't have purple on her. She didn't go in. She's not a painter like me. <laughs> I have all my clothes, the color of my paintings. No, it's the reflective color from things around the atmosphere. Atmospheric perspective, they call that. Now I'll go right down here. And, um, and that's her. That's her cheek right there. We got to put, we got to cover her cheek up here. And so we'll put that in there dark. And we'll get, um, she, does, she does have tights on that are white, but that doesn't mean that a little bit of um, warmth will not fire through there. So we're going to make a little bit of warmth through there. 
just go down with any color basically is what I'm doing first and then I'll come back in and then do my whole you know, spiel I just did remember with the purple get a little bit of purple in the side because there's a lot of that reflecting in here and then there's a lot of that reflecting down here and just follow your drawing that's why I want your drawing to be good because then you don't have to worry about that if your drawing is good from your pencil study then you don't have to worry about it when you go to paint it because you already did that part you already got that then looking really nice so maybe a little bit darker here right underneath the dress because there'd be a little shadow from the tutu coming down here lights coming from this way so this side of the leg would be a little bit darker though she's got her leg all twisted to the back and you know it almost feels like she's broken her leg but that's just the way she's standing ballet dancers always stand really weird with their legs and how they stand so there is my middle tone darks you know and um that's a middle tone but it's i think it's more towards the dark is what i'm keeping it to put this in here and that's not detail that's large area later on i'll go in there and get a little bit more of the detail for like um, folds or shadows and stuff like that right now it's the overall big area and i had it drawn right so it's it's okay it's going to be fine now this dress we've got to get done because we're going to go in with our darkest darks around that i did the darkest dark here only because there's nothing that to go around right at the moment and so now we're going to go and do our dress and so i'm going to make that i'm going to pick up since it is yellow i want to make it yellow i'm going to start out with the yellow and just um it's a dirty yellow because i have a little bit of orange in it and if you want to dull it put a little bit of purple in it and then that'll give you a nice dull dull yellow gold and then um that gives me my shadow and if i want to make it even darker yet pick up some of that color you've just been using for the flesh tone put that right in there because you already use it for the flesh tone you'll know it'll match your painting it'll match what you've been using and that's what a painting is it's a series of colors that you use throughout the whole painting and so you don't want to start putting in different colors just because they're in the photograph you use the colors because you already used them in the photograph or in your painting you that's the way you um, decide on colors is that that's the color you used already for my dark and so pick up those colors that it's all going to mix together well this purple and yellow now they're all mixed together because i've got them everywhere i did mix a little bit of um there's a little bit of blue in here which doesn't quite fit and so i'm going to put some of that in the other side and so then it'll be okay i'm going to put a little lavender inside of this yellow too to dull it up always take the compliment to dull off an area you know yellow is purple and so if you put a little purple next to the yellow you're going to get a uh, kind of a gray and that's the way of getting it to look like a shadow and so we take those colors and you can even use violet over there and just put it in here like this let's see if we have any questions i saw you paint on black paper would this be a good idea yes it would thanks sue um, that was a really good question because i've had a lot of people ask me that today yes it would be great to put on black and um let me just show you a couple of black pieces here i did uh, something like that but yes this would be a very good um painting to do on black i did a couple um black pieces where the um if most of your painting is black and really dark dark here's a piece i did on black and so you can see then if you use um, black paper there's not very little bit of painting to do this so this one definitely would have been great on black and um, i could do one of those one of these days i'm going to be doing a acrylic demonstration one time just not to do it on a thursday night just to do a demonstration and um it will be um advertised and so look for that i'll be doing that in a little bit but something like that i did on black and again anything that um on black paper that here a black dog that's already done on black and so you can see it, it basically works well on black paper and this is black watercolor paper called stonehenge aqua black it's the same paper i'm using but in black same paper as this but in black this is my white stonehenge all right so let's go in here with a little bit more of the yellow thanks for that question sue and um yeah a lot of people had asked that in class and also last night a friend of mine asked that and goes oh that would have been great to do it on black yep now over here we're going to get reflections of the purple down here into the bottom of the white dress because basically this this tutu uh, is pretty much white but it's reflecting um yellow well no i guess the pop is yellow i had to make that yellow but i'm gonna make this down here more um lavender underneath and then that'll indicate underneath because it's reflecting up from the floor 
and then let me put a little bit of this gold into that violet and it'll look gray and so it'll look um, very much so like it's in shadow underneath and then we'll put the dark around that and then it'll be just as good again any questions just put them up there yes um rose the black paper is from legion papers it's, uh, it's the same paper it's the same aqua um Le it's the stonehenge aqua um a series the stonehenge aqua series is from legion and they're out of new york new york city and so now i've got my middle tones i've got um the whole dress done um pretty much all that stuff and so now i'm gonna go back in and get this dark part and then my middle tones in here and we're done except for the details and then get the uh, masking fluid off but this part is easy the dark darks those are fun actually the dark is that i'm gonna turn the paper over here just to get because i can do this easier if i'm working downwards right here for this for this line and so don't stand on your head when you're watching this <laughs> don't turn your tv upside down i'm just gonna do this really quickly i'm gonna get this line right here and i can make this not as dark as that because what i can do is make it look farther back so why don't I make a little bit of purple in there, drop a little bit of the lavender in there to make it look like it's farther back and it's really strong light, right? And so we're just going to make that strong light and I'm wetting as I go along. I didn't pre-wet it to get a soft edge. I didn't want a soft edge in there, but once you wet it, then it becomes, you know, soft edge area. That's when you're floating your pigment and then you get darker and darker. William Alexander used to say, daka, daka, daka. So we're going to go in here, float some pigment, take it down in the back here. And I'm going up right up to the masking fluid, even though um, it kind of stopped me from going into the thing. So it's kind of neat to put the masking fluid down because it'll stop you from going into the head, which at times you almost kind of want to do that, though. There's times where you want to, like, let's say, put a little bit in into the head right here, just so that you get a little bit of that color in there. And not everything has to be a hard edge. Lost and found edges. Let the edges be lost a little bit so that your imagination has a little bit to have something to do you know you can just your mind puts that together for you you don't have to explain everything in a painting people know what things are your mind is smart enough to know what's happening in the painting so now i'm just dipping into a lot of my darks so look at how dark i'm going and i'm going to wet this as i go along so i'm going to wet a little bit ahead just put down water and then pick up a lot of pigment and um, let me do it upside right side up again so i can know what i'm doing here because my photograph is not upside down so I got to see what's there. So we'll put it this way again. And then we'll go in here and get some of these lines. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of highlight there on the edge. I'm kind of going out to the edge. And again, control the pigment and the solution of the pigment, the amount of pigment by the amount of pigment you have. So just the thicker it is, the less it's going to bleed into a wet surface. And so you can control the edge. You can make an edge a little bit sharper, even though it's going to be soft because it's wet in the wet, but you can make it a little bit sharper. And you can also put other colors in there besides just those colors you see. Let's say I want to put a little bit of warmth in there, a little bit of red. Just put it right on top. Just take right that yellow eye color and put it right on top. It, it will blend right into it. And here you can go right into the masking fluid. I don't want to go into this arm. I want to kind of hold that, hold that together on its own. I didn't put masking fluid there, so I know I have to be a little bit more careful right there. Make this maybe really dark. Come down. Come down around here. Make a little bit of lavender in here. I just, I don't, I want it to be, you know, a little bit moody. I don't want it to be so perfect, everything, the brush stroke. I like to have a little bit of looseness to it. And you do that, you just, you know, don't be as careful. The values, and as long as you keep the values where they're supposed to be, you know, where you're drawing, you're going to be doing fine. And what you put in there color-wise and how the technique is that you're putting in, that won't matter so much as um, that you got your, got your drawing right and you got your values right. Then the technique, like spattering, or that all comes to what you want to do. Make it, make it fun, you know, make it splashy. You know, make it um, where you rub out a lot. You know, whatever your technique is of putting the watercolor down, uh, any of that watercolor techniques were great. So I'm coming down here. I'm gonna do this a little bit of this. I'm gonna spatter a little bit. Oh, I didn't want to spatter over there. So let me get my paper towel real quickly. Take that and just put that over that a little bit. I want. Okay, and our 
back. I don't want I got freckles on her back. But here it's kind of neat. Look at it. A little bit of it'll be like a little bit of stuff happening in there. That's cool. That kind of thing. Now there's shadows going to come across here. Um, they're coming from this area right here. We're going to kind of come in there with some of these dark colors. Throw it in there. Shadow it up. Wet this area first, and then I'm going to work it. Once you wet it, you can always work it. And get your hard edges that you need, and then move on to the, your um, into your darks and what's happening. So here, underneath her dress right here, is a dark. And then there's a shadow going down this way. And there's another one coming this way. And I'm getting it with a lot. It's all wet, so they're going to be soft edges. And that'll look like shadows nicely. And so then I'll leave that soft edged. This is a little bit weird on her leg right here, so I'm going to put that a little bit dark. Oh, run right into her toe. Then I'm going to make this across here. Maybe make this dark again. Kind of come over here. Pre-wet this area. And see how suddenly... Now, this is a hard edge. I don't want a hard edge right there, as per se. I want it to be a little bit more soft edge right there. I do want it to go dark down here a little bit. Not really dark, but just so... I'm going to wet the area. Make sure this is all dry. Kind of going to come up here. Wet it. And if I wet it with just water, nothing will happen. And this, this, so I'll just leave it. I will, nothing will happen whatsoever. But down here, I want it to kind of go to a darker color. So then mess with it. You know, get this little shadow in here you need and give it a little texture, give it a little spatter. I'll do some water, some watermarks. But a little bit too much water. See, a little bit too much water gives you watermarks. And it gives it a kind of a neat watercolor look. Not everything has to look like a photograph. You can make it look like a nice painting that has a cool technique. One of the techniques in watercolor that's really neat is sometimes having watermarks or having a wash or having blended areas where it's floating and a little spatter in it. That's kind of a, a watercolor technique. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for things that look like a watercolor because that's what you're painting, a watercolor. Here I'll put, go right into the leg and I'll put some of that color right into the leg. And I'm probably shouldn't put it right there because this is the light side. So <laughs> don't put it right there. <laughs> Here I'm going back and forth and I'm going to do a little bit of that. And if you like it really soft in here, yeah, you can do that too. It's up to you. You do whatever you want. But make it look like a watercolor. I mean, because that's what you're doing. You're, you're doing a watercolor. Now there's a nice little gizmo over there. And again, I didn't take that out because I like the fact that it um, projects forward in front of her to make her come back forward by putting this little dark here. And it's, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. But it helps to bring her body backwards towards me by putting a dark in front of it. And so I'm just going to make that dark. Any questions? Uh, nope. Just with the black paper. Let me turn it sideways real quickly because I can do things easier, like straight up and down like this. Go across that. It's a little bit too purple, so I'm going to mess up a little bit of this color here with a little bit of the... With, uh, See all these colors in here, I use them already. I know they're going to work on this painting because that's my whole painting is done with the palette. So just reach in there and grab that color. You know it's going to fit because you already used it. I know I see a lot of people cleaning their palette all the time throughout their whole painting, but that is the worst you could do because then you lose all your colors that you just had. you got to work with those colors that are on your palette throughout the, pal throughout the process of your painting. You start messing around with the colors and getting rid of them, then you get a problem. Because then nothing will match. It will nothing will match each other. So now um, looks like we've got that. Make this edge. Let's make the edge a little bit darker. Down here. And let me just look here up here. See if any questions? No. All right. So now I'm looking at it. Boy, I got a. One of these days I gotta calibrate my, my my monitor because it is so light. And these things look like it's this looks like it's a white dress there. Like it's, and it it isn't it is white in certain areas, but there's a wash. Remember I put that first wash over it? And this area in here has a little bit of violet in there, and my colors are all blue in my my monitor. So I gotta I gotta deal with that someday. So I can tell you so you can I'm not, I just, it all depends on what your uh, monitor shows, but um, then again, the colors, like, like I said before, they don't matter as much as, as the values do. So while this is drying, um, and it seems like most of the stuff is dry, except for down here where I just did that, 
up here, I'm going to see if I can't take the masking fluid off because we're about at that time where we just put the details in. The one thing you want to watch out for uh, masking fluid is, is that you put it, um, take it off when it's only totally dry. Otherwise, you screw a lot of things up. So I noticed that there's still a lot of stuff that is wet, so I'm going to have to keep on going here. So I'm going to do some of the details with my small, small brush here. Like, I'm going to go in here now to the hair and just start putting in the hair and throw in a little bit of the bun right here. Side of the hair, here's behind the ear. And, um, as you can see, I'm gonna, I want to put more of the um, bun. It's up actually, bun farther up here. That's the bottom of her hair. You can have a little strands if you want floating down. A lot of times it's fun to put a little bit of a, like the one or two strands that kind of just came down there that got loose. And so here we're going to put a little bit of a, a hole in the bun. Behind the ears always usually dark. Um, the straps are going to be light, and I can either do that with white paint or I can scrub out. But I'm going to show you how to scrub out in a second. But I'm still waiting for it to dry a little bit. How much time do we have here? Oh, we're just a little bit over 7 o'clock. So we're doing really good here today. So we have plenty of time. So ask some questions. <laughs> give me a chance to <laughs> give me a chance to um, slow down here a little bit and get this dry. So I'm going to put a little lavender in here. Dark in here, lavender. This is shadowed. This is her hand shadowed along there. So all these little little areas. I'm doing little details now because I'm stalling. <laughs> and um, I will put some lights in there too. And her dress here, put it dark. Let's give her some. Some tights on the bottom that are the same color as her dress. And there we go. All right, her shoe. Make her shoes the color of the of her outfit. Also, usually what they're, they're usually the color like pink and the color of her outfit. Do a little, so we can separate the light here a little bit with the dark. Put a little shadow on this side. there all right dry okay so to take the masking fluid off you can either use a rubber cement pickup which is those little squares I don't have one right at the moment but I have to just use my finger what I do is I just rub right here where it's dry I just take and I rub and it usually comes out really see how good it is back to the white you're just taking off and getting back to the white and the thing is when you're putting down mask white watch out where you put it down and it's got to be really nicely put down because when you rip it up this is damp, so it's tearing some of the paper here a little bit. So I gotta hurry here. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so that gives me my light, my light back again. A little line. And you can soften that edge again. You can go back in there later on and soften the edge. Get rid of all this little plastic on your paper. What else I got here? I got this edge right here. Now, this is a pretty boring part, sorry guys, but let's ask a question. <laughs> somebody's got to have a question, right? Come on, somebody's got a question out there. Sorry about that. Here we go. Just so this dry. There we go. See, if you do it while it's damp too, it also rips the paper. So just, you have to do it while it's dry. But this is pretty good. There I got a little dirty. I, I picked up a little bit of the um, top of the, on top of the. Also on the top of the masking fluid, if it's got color on there and it's still damp, the paint, then it's going to rub right underneath. Once you get this off of there, of course it's going to rub right off into the into the paper because it's just basically a pigment that you are rubbing in with the because it's part of the masking fluid. Then so you're just rubbing that right in there. Yes, isn't this fun to watch? <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me get the top of her head and let's see here. That part's still a little wet there. I'm going to have to watch that the front of her face here. I'll go in here to her ear, which I'll make red. And again, to, for all you newcomers, you can get my the big image of it. 
You can get it right on my website, right on the front. And you know, a lot of times I have it there before even Tuesday. Um, so you can get it all week before my newsletter even comes out sometimes. So if you want to hurry up, sometimes I get it in there way before Tuesday when my newsletter comes out. And I get everything because I have to pretty much get all that stuff together before Tuesday. Um, before my newsletter comes out because it's always also my newsletter. All right, so now we suddenly we have this beautiful light shining on our right. I mean, it's rim lighting. Somebody asked about that last week about doing rim lighting. And this is how you do it. Masking fluid, even it could be trees, it could be outside, it could be outdoors. Um, so that's, you basically do the outline of, of the rim lighting. Because it's hitting her, she's in shadow, and there's some of it going around her form, but basically she's in shadow, and then the rim lighting really shows how, how bright the light is. The brightness of the light will make the rim lighting. So I'm going to put a little bit of the color in here. Again, because this is a very frilly dress or tutu. So we're going to go in here and just get all that. Now I'm going back into somewhere where the masking fluid was and kind of giving my shadowing in here. And you notice I have a little bit of the orangey yellow, gold, and I have a little bit of lavender in there. This is so bright that getting a little bit of everything in there is, is a good thing. Nothing is just one color. You remember that. Remember I always say that. Um, nothing is just one color. You always put some other colors in there. And here there's a dress laying down here in this corner here. We put a little of that in there too. Just laying there. Somebody said, should they take that out? I kind of thought it was nice to have a little bit of something in there. I mean, you don't have to have that. If I put my finger over it, I guess it doesn't have to be in there, but it just gives it kind of a way to go back up into the scene. You can soften some of the edges in there so it's not so noticeable too. Anytime you put a soft edge into something, it kind of just blends into that area. Now let's go and get our really detailed darks and lights. So um, I wanted to show you how to, the straps on her are um, light and the photograph. And so instead of using white paint, I could just take my quarter inch brush and start rubbing out. Just really qu quickly to rub it back and forth, back and forth. And see how I suddenly just get this little strap. I'm just rubbing back and forth. I'm not even blotting. I'm just rubbing it forward, bringing it down. So I'm basically taking the pigment and pushing it down to her dress. So there's one strap. I'll just not, And if you want to make it lighter, you could just use the paper towel and then you get it wet. But you see, you just put it right on there. Now there's another one on this side. I just start, I wiggle back and forth. Use the side of the brush, really pointy. And this is a rectangular brush. So I've got this, this like a line of bristles that I make it straight. See, they're about a quarter inch across, but they're really sharp. And so you can just go along it and just kind of rub it back and forth. It's hard to do it with a small round brush because you only have one bristle on there rubbing. Here I've got um, probably a thousand bristles rubbing right down the edge. And I can't do it with a bristle brush because that would be too thick, those bristles. So this is a really fine brush. Now, if you're using a paper where it's really absorbing a lot, this may be a little bit harder because Stonehenge keeps it on top a little bit. So that's that. Inside her, this little um, stuff we have, I'm going to rub out a little bit. So it looks like this is a sheer, a sheer um, material, almost like a silky sheer material that goes across her arms here. And so I can just make the little lights and then make some little dark areas too with the lavender because that's what I'm using for my, for my shadowing on, on light. I'm using some lavender. And again, it'll match because I've already used it everywhere else. It's just, and I guess people say that it's kind of like a, um, more of a monotone painting, you know, or a duotone where there's only two colors. But it's not really because I, not only do I have the purple and the yellow, but I do have other, other colors in there. Maybe a little blue in there, maybe a little gray. So it's not like, you know, when I say duotone or, or monotone, there's more colors than there's the one color. Or the two colors that I'm using. Here I'll soften some of these light um, lights that I have in there. Here I'll put a little orange behind your ear or in your ear because the ear blood vessels on your ear is really thin so um, it shines almost the light shines through the ear and merely brights them up. If you look at the photograph closely you'll see that you're going to get a lot of that like the ear is almost bright red because the blood vessels are so close to the, the skin that you're going to see a little bit you know a little bit closer but I'm not using red because I don't have red I'm using more orange because there's more orangey yellow in this than there is red 
So don't follow the photograph, follow your artistic license. <laughs> do what you have to do to make it look right. I'm gonna put our little our spine in. <laughs> Bring your spine in. Ah, man, I haven't had a drink. Cheers, guys. I didn't even get cheers. Cheers for uh, let's get this cold weather gone. Ah, oh, that's really good. Milkshake IPA. Hmm. Okay, so let me think what else we got to do here. So we're going to go over to this. Um, let me see what else. Should I put a little white in there, put a little dark. Let's see. I'm not sure. I could put a little dark. I'm going to put a little warmth in her leg because it looks they, she, they look kind of gray and I like her back being a little bit more warm. So I'm going to take and um, wet a little bit and just float a little bit of orange down into her leg here. Just to get a little bit of that, a little bit more. I know she's got, like I said, I know she's got leggings on, but I just need to get some of that color down here, just to get it in that area. I want to thank a couple of you also. I've had some donations from you guys for these um, workshops. Thank you so much. It really helps to have the um, to keep them free. I'm I'm keeping them free these um, Thursday nights and stuff and. And thank you so much for those of you who have donated. You can donate on my website. There's a little PayPal button, donate button. Thanks so much for doing that. That really helps out a lot. So I'm going to put a little bit of edge right here. And I'm going to put a little... These are shadows coming from in here now. And so I'm just going to put those in there just to show how it's shadowed. from The, the light's coming this way, right? Coming out. So that's where I'm putting those shadows. And I think that's pretty close. So let me take the masking fluid off. I mean, not the masking fluid, but the tape off. I think I'm pretty much done here, unless you guys got some questions. And um, we're keeping it simple. And let me show you close up too. Once I get the tape off, I'm gonna show you closer up so you can see how much um, of the pigment is laid down. And, And again, for all of you who are new here, um, I'm always taking suggestions for things that um, you'd like to see me paint or that you have a problem with and you want to kind of learn how to paint that way. Um, gotten a bunch of, a lot of times we get their same requests and if I see that everybody's doing the same request, we will do it again. Somebody had requested a boat, but I think I did a boat not too long ago, but I'm going to do boats again probably. But again, anything that you feel that you, you haven't done or something I haven't covered, um, I haven't done a portrait, I don't think yet, but I think that's a little bit more difficult, but we can do that one day too. So here we go with the um, picture. We're going to have to put it over here this way. And um, let me look at it one more time just to make sure we got everything we need. Yep, I think that's pretty much it. And again, here's the other one that I had done this afternoon, just to show the difference between the two colors. So here we had the blue blue and here we have the blue and orange and here's more of the yellow um, purple even though um, my screen doesn't make it look purple at all it's like it was blue but um, this one is definitely more violet lavenders and this one's more of the blue stage and and actually you can always tell the second one is always fresher that's what happens because this one was like a practice it'll do a practice one the first one and the next time they do the second one it's always more fresh because you've already done it and so you know what to put down and leave and just um, leave it well enough alone a lot of times the first one you're mixing and working things so you're not quite sure how things are going to end up so you know sometimes it's good to do a little um color study too if you're doing a big one of these do a small one and then you get to a big one so um again thanks for um, joining me on thursday nights we'll do it every thursday night next thursday we'll do it again and we will be back um every thursday night and we'll make sure that you can um send me some send me some images and some ideas <laughs> i'm running out of ideas we're doing quite a few of these and again for those of you who are putting them on the um they're putting them on on facebook um, i have a group sign up for my group i don't have a um, button yet on my website which i've got to get to going on but if you go to my facebook page um there's a group called um becker art um achieving goal um group and stuff and that's what a lot of you have been putting it on there and thank you so much for doing that that's really neat and i love seeing what you're doing with these paintings it's fun seeing that um we're all painting the same thing but it comes out so differently so for another thursday thanks again guys for coming by we'll see you 
Um, we'll try another. I actually bought six beers today, all different beers from a craft store. And so thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next Thursday.